Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing great and keeping healthy. Welcome to the end of term video explanations where we will discuss all the exam topics one by one. This is for the term 3, uh, year 2022-2023. Now, before we begin, I quickly want to thank all those who have subscribed to my channel. I greatly appreciate it. It means a lot to me. If you're finding this channel useful and if you have not yet subscribed to it, please do hit the subscribe button and do share it among your friends who can benefit from it. I am Justin Darrell de Souza, and we will quickly go through the exam scheme and then we will start with the explanation videos. As you might already have seen this exam scheme, there are three parts, part one, part two and part three. With part one, ten questions are there, each carry three marks. So these are the part one questions, but as the part two carries five marks each and there are ten questions again. So this is all five marks each. They are supposed to be a bit more complicated than the part one. And lastly, we have part three, that is the writing part, where there are three questions which will be asked for six or seven marks. And there are two bonus questions, which is five marks each. These can be any learning objective throughout whatever you have learned in term three. If you want entire lesson details, you can click on the playlist and click on the appropriate you can click on the playlist and you can see all the uh, lesson videos have been explained as well. You can go through that. Now, in this playlist, I will be sticking to all the 23 topics which will which are mentioned for your exam scheme. Please stay tuned. I will upload each video as soon as possible whenever I can do them. And I'll be preparing. I'll be doing all the 23 videos, but in time. So please do subscribe and stay tuned. And we will start in the next video from the first topic. Welcome to the first topic of the exam scheme. Here they have asked us to find the multiple representation of a polar coordinate. They have asked us to find the three additional pairs of polar coordinates that name the given point F negative 360 theta to positive 360 or negative 2 pi to positive 2 pi. At this particular point, phi comma two forty degrees. It may seem complicated, but it's very easy. First, first things first. What does this mean? Three sixty to negative three sixty. That means now, if this is a polar grid, the circle, it, the degree starts from year to year ninety, one eighty, two seventy, and three sixty. In this, imagine we have one point. Let's take a simple point over here. Okay. Now. This can be represented like this. Imagine this is 45 degrees and the, the radius say it is 3. It can be written as 3, 45 degrees. But the same point can be represented in different names. Only in polar coordinates, the same thing can be given in different name. Now, how can we mention it? We can mention instead of the, uh, you know, the anti-clockwise, we can take clockwise and write negative angle. We can tell. From year to year, it will be 360 minus 45, that will be 315. So what you do is 3, comma, negative 315. It's the same thing because if we go, if you have negative angles, we have to take in the opposite direction, that's clockwise, and we are coming to the same point, 3 radius. Or we can extend this line, now we can tell from year to year how much is the angle. So we know this much is 90 and this is 45, 45, so it's 180. So if we take minus 180 degrees, but the radius will be minus 3. That means we're coming to this point and going backwards. Because if it's minus radius, then we go opposite direction. So again, we reach the same point. Or if we take positive direction from year to year, it would be 180 plus 45, that is uh, 225. Again, we would reach the same point, negative 3, comma, positive 225 degrees. So there are four ways to represent a single coordinate. This is whether when we consider from 0 to 360. But now sometimes they might just only consider 0 to 180. Then there will be two representations from year to year and from uh, other way around. Only two representations. So now we will see the, the angle. It depends on the angle. It must be restricted to within 180. 
uh, within positive to uh, this would be one answer and this would be the answer now let's look into the problems you'll understand much better here we have to graph it's better to graph now 240 degrees is somewhere over here and phi means it's in the fifth line so it's one two three four phi radius and with we have 240 degree from here to here so if i draw from here to here if i draw a straight line it would be 240 degrees extend this backward just in case we will use that later so that is obviously the first point we know phi comma 240 what is the negative angle from here we can just subtract 360 from it and find it so it will be negative 120 or you do not need to follow any of this you can just see this from here it was 240 how much is this other side it will be 360 minus 240 that will be negative 120 would land up to the same point and 5 so that would be one answer now extend this line how do we get over here it's 180 degrees so now from here negative 120 sorry positive uh, 240 if you subtract 180 you will get this angle and then from here if you give minus 5 radius you will come to the same point so what you are doing is here from here it is 60 why because 240 minus 180 is 60 so if you do 60 degrees you are going to get this line but take minus 5 so you will go in the opposite direction and now if this is 60 how to get the negative angle of this all you need to do is minus 300 so you will get the answer minus 300 why because we know this is 60 so how do we get over here from this it will be minus 300 degrees you will reach the same point minus 5 so this is how we can represent it in different ways over here we have one more problem where this this is the point the point is at 4 comma 135 degrees same way now pause the video and try it by yourself I hope you have tried it. It's very simple. All you need to know is this is the positive angle 135. This subtracted from 360 gives you the other angle that is negative 225. Now swap it over here. So what you need to do is just add or subtract 180 degree. You will get this at this point that is 315 or from here it will be negative 45. That's it. It's very straightforward. You will get the answers similarly please do try these problems it's very very simple now over here you can see one 150 is the first angle so how do we get the negative 360 minus 150 is negative 210 now over here you can subtract and add 180 and you can find the others so if you just draw it over here it will be much much convenient so 150 is somewhere over here so this would be the line so from year to year it's negative 30 and then minus and if it was like this, it's 330 and minus. Whereas if you just subtract this from 360, you should take the positive. Please solve it by yourself and then compare. Don't be scared if there is pi, you can convert this to radian. All you need to do is substitute pi equals 180 and then solve. Now imagine you want to get it in terms of degree, 7 pi by 6. All you need to do is negative 7 pi will be 180 divided by 6 this is the answer in degrees let's negative 210 you will get in degrees and then you can convert this to uh, radians all you need to do is divide this by pi uh, divide this by 180 sorry and that will be the answer 7 by negative 7 by 6 but do remember to write pi after that that's it so these are the answers please do it by yourself and then check it now over here it's the same thing but they have told to restrict it from 0 to 180 that means it will be from here to here so only this angle point so you can see the angles are one one of this and then this itself so please do try it by yourself just restrict the angles within this range you must make sure whatever the angles you get will be constrained in this now this is coterminal angle just keep on subtracting 360 until you get an angle within this range so this is how we can do it please do it by yourself and then check it out it's very simple and straightforward if you're not understood just pause and go back to the video explanation at the beginning you will understand it thoroughly 
so this is how you solve the first topic. Moving on to the second topic, it is to graph simple polar equations. But in the exam scheme, you will be given graph and you need to select the correct equation. If you know one way, then the other way is very easy. So let's look into this problem now. Graph the polar equation theta equals 5 pi by 6. You do not need to do all the table and stuff. All you need to know is what is this particular angle? How do you find it? We saw it in the last video. Wherever there is pi, just write, um, sorry, I'll just do this. Wherever there is pi, just put 180 and now divided by 6. This is the degrees, 150 degrees. To get this back to radians, all you need to do is divide this by 180 and write pi in front of this. So 5 by 6 pi. All you need to know is over here r is not given. So r can be any real number. It can be positive or negative. So what do we do is sketch the graph. You need to draw a 150 degree line. And then see it's just basically a 150 degree line which is 5 pi by 6 and then draw a straight line. So that is a very bad uh, line to draw over something. This is the line. It's either positive or negative. That's it. So this is how we solve it. Now even over here, you can easily check it out which is the correct one or you can see the graph and check which is the correct option. So what you can do is let's look carefully how much is 7 pi by uh, 7 pi by 4. If you're getting confused, just change it to degree. 7 by 4 pi, that is 180, is equal to 315 degrees. So where does 315 degree lie? 315 is somewhere over here like this. Okay. So now since R is not given, it can be any real number. So this is wrong. This is wrong. And this is also wrong. This is supposed to be right, but it's not all real numbers, right? So the first option is the correct one. This is it. Now you need to find the equation for these graphs. Again, it's another simple one. All you need to know is how much is this degree? Now, you know, this much is pi by 6 is 30 degrees. We start with 30, 60, 90 and so on. So this is basic. Half of 30 is 15 degrees. So 15 degrees. That's the answer. Over here now it's given as pi by uh, 2 r. It's fine. 15 divided by 180 is how much? It will be 1 by 12 times pi. That is pi by 12. That's it. Now, over here, you can see the radius is mentioned, but there's no angle. Look, what is the radius? It can either be 2.5 or negative 2.5. So, radius is uh, both of them, 2.5 or negative 2.5. Even over here, you can either take it as 15 degrees or 360 minus 15. That would be 345. Similarly, over here, radius is 4 or minus 4. And over here, you have the answer. It's 135 or 360 minus 135. It's up to you. So this is the thing. Or you can even check this answer. See over here it will be um, just this much. Or the other coterminal angles. So this is it. And also please watch the videos in continuity. Because we saw a similar video in the first topic. So this is just the continuation of that. So please stay tuned. Please stay tuned for the next videos. And we will learn more about polar equations and graphing them. The third topic is to graph polar equations. And in the third topic of your exam scheme, they have specifically asked you problems. These are the problems where they have asked you to plot the points. So now, how do we do it is our sine theta is given. So what you need to do is make a table of values with theta and the radius r that is the sine theta. So you need to assume these theta values. Generally, we assume 0 to 360. That is same over here. 0 to 2 pi. That is 360 degrees. Pi means 180. And we give a spacing of generally 30 degrees. So 0, 30, 60, 90. You can see pi by 6 is 30. Pi by 3 is uh, 60. Then we have 90. That is pi by 2 and so on. It keeps on added by 30. And then when you put this in the calculator, you'll get the answer. I'll just show you how. All you're doing is 
it depends on which you use i'll be using the degree for now i won't change the mode because degree is easy to type rather than uh, radians so i will just use sign zero is always zero sign zero is zero now let me put it as 30 that is 0.5 that is half let me change it to 60 the root 3 by 2 or 0 0.866 that's 0 0.9 where we can change it to 90 it's one and so on don't you think it takes so much long time to get this table it, it is it is really taxing and boring so there's a shortcut method you can do it in your calculator all you need to do is press mode and you can see there's a table this is the table of values right let's click on that table okay what is the function you need to uh, find the table of values for it's sine theta, right? So put sine. There is no theta option, but there's x. So f of x is sine x. Then press equal to. We are dealing only with one equation, so ignore this. f of x is submitted. It's fine. g of x is nothing. Press equal to again. Where do you want to start? We always start from 0 and end at 360 degrees. And what is the interval? We want to give 30 or 40 or 60, whatever. Let's start with 30 over here. At 30 degrees, I want the intervals. That's it. Now look at the values. 0 is 0. 30 is 0 0.5. Uh, 60 is 0 0.866. That's 0 0.9. And all these values are matching. They get you all the values. You can check this out. All the values will match. So this is much easy and much simpler method. If you had put g of x, then you'll get one more equation, but only one is enough now. And now, once you have the x and y values, you can graph. How do you graph? You need to start now over here, 0 is 0. So that means over here, you start with 0 and 0. Now at 30 degrees, this is pi by 6. What is the value? At 0 0.5. So this is the 0 0.5 over here. At 30 degrees now what about uh, 60 degrees that's 0.9 so it's somewhere over here it's 0.866 and then pi by 2 is 90 it's 1 same way we can do the others now 2 by 3 is 0.9 this is simple and 0 0 again pi is 0 where pi we have 0 now what about these negative values 7 pi by 6 is over here but it says negative 0 0.5 that means you have to go in the opposite direction and you reach at the same point back over here same thing with 3 pi by 2 it's over here but negative 1 is opposite side and you come over here so this is the thing you'll come back to the same point and this is the graph because it's symmetrical over here now you can try this graphing by yourself and pause the video, graph it by yourself, and then check the answer. So now we will check this answer. Over here, we need to make the table of values. Let's use our calculator. Now, mode, you can, if you press on, it'll go back to the same mode. That is mode table, more than seven. And now let's type three cos x because theta is unknown. And now you press equal to. Don't type anything over here. Let's start with 0 and end at 360. And then let's give this step of 30. And this, these are the values. Let's double check it. Over here you can see they are the exact same values. 0, 30 is 2.6, 1.5. Again it will be 0 and so on. All the values are over here. Now, with these values, you know how to graph them. You can easily graph it. 0, it starts at 3 over here. And then you have pi by 6 at 2.6. So you can see pi by 6 is over here, bit in between 2 and 3. Whereas pi by 3 is 1.5 over here. That's in between 1 and 2. And then pi by 2 is 0 and it goes on. So this is how we can easily graph. Please do go through these problems by yourself try them and solve it solve it and then double check the answers i will quickly show you how to plot this cos now we don't have cos option isn't it sorry a uh, cosecant cos is there sine is there tan is there what about this cosecant it's simple it's just that you must remember cosecant is one by sine so all i need to do is write one divided by sine x close the bracket 
And where does it start? It starts from zero, it ends at 360, it's the same thing. And let's have a step of 30. And here you will get C now. This one is you're getting an error. Why? Because there is no value, it's undefined at zero. Now you can see at 30 degrees, where is 30 degrees? Over here, pi by six, what's the value? It's two. If you look closely at 30 degrees, this is the point. You can see this is the point. And then at 60, this is the thing. It is about 1.15. Yes, it is correct. It's 1.15. And then you can see other values at 90. It is 1 and so on. So there are error values at some points. That means it is undefined over there. And then other values, you can plot them. Minus 2. Now, for example, over here, 330. 330 is over here. Minus 2 means you are going the opposite direction. So that's the thing. Remember, the minus signs means you're going in the opposite direction, whereas the plus signs is in the normal direction. This is it. Now, one more thing. You will have four options of the graph. So just do the table and then check which is the correct graph. That's it. You can easily check if it's a cos graph, it's, it'll be circles. Whereas if you have a secant graph, it's going to be line. The vertical line, because secant is a horizontal line. And looking at the graphs you can easily plot it you can see over here these are the different type of graphs so a negative means it's down positive would be up similarly there are few tactics but this is the exact method so do the table method by going to more seven and then uh, plotting the tables and then you can easily uh, find which is the correct graph the fourth topic is to convert polar and rectangular coordinates now, conversion of polar to rectangular is very simple. To find x, so polar is basically r and theta, rectangular is x and y. To find x, you need to substitute r cos theta. They will give you r and theta. That means it's polar, right? So, the polar will be given. That is r and theta. That is radius and angle. All you need to do is substitute the radius cos theta to get x. Whereas r sine theta would be y. So these are the basic formula. Now let's see how to convert. You have been given a polar coordinate 4, pi by 6. You need to convert this to radians. Uh, sorry, you need to convert to rectangular form. r is given, theta is given. It's up to you to convert or not convert. If you're not convert converting this to degree, you need to change to radian mode. I will tell you how. The answer will be the same. Now, if you want to use pi by 6 itself, you need to press shift, more, and then radians. Now, we know the formula is r into cos theta, that is pi by 6, divided by 6. So, this is the answer. 2 root 3, you can see over here, 2 root 3. If I change this to sine, it's going to be just 2. And that is y value. But if you are not willing to change to radian mode, it's the default mode in degree. The default is in degree. Now, all you need to do is, wherever you get the angle pi by 6, so pi, instead of pi, put 180 divided by 6. What is the angle? That is 30 degrees. Now, you are used 30, that is cos 30. That is 2 root 3 and change it to sine 30. <clears throat> Sorry, this is sine 30 and it is 2. So this is how you can easily convert from polar to rectangular coordinates. This is not required, but this is just the graphic. The answer is 2 root 3, comma 2. Same way you can try this by yourself. Do it by yourself. Pause the video and check the answer in a while. Now don't worry if it's negative or anything. It's fine. Now you can do it's 60 degrees, but still, how do you do? Minus pi is 180 divided by 3. That's 60, negative 60. So r is 4 into cos negative 60. Close the bracket. That's 2. And whereas if you want sine, all you need to do is change this to sine and you will get the answer. Minus 2 root 3. This is how we get it. And try all these problems by yourself and then check the answers. Very simple, very straightforward. And please do check them. But first, you need to try it by yourselves. So that's it.
the fifth topic is to recognize whether the sequence is arithmetic or not. Now, before we uh, start problems, let's see the arithmetic sequence. You can read this through, but what it means is basically, if you have, say, a sequence, it must have a constant difference. Over here, you can see 4 is being added, and this 4 must be added throughout. It shouldn't be only for 3 terms and then it's changed. It can't be 2 all over here. Since 4 is being added, 4 must be added all the time. 6 plus 4 is 10. And now, that 4 which is being added regularly, repeated interval, that is called the common difference. It is found by the second term minus the first term. And this sequences are called arithmetic sequence. Let's see a problem. We are to determine whether this is arithmetic sequence or not. All you need to do is look into this problem. This term, sorry, second term. Subtract it from the first term. Don't do it only for one term. Do it for the other two as well. Because they are asking you to check if they are arithmetic or not. You never know. So let's do minus 17 minus of minus 6. And lastly, minus 28 minus of minus 17. Now all you need to do is solve them. Minus 6 minus 5 is negative 11. Over here it is plus 6, so negative 17 plus 6 is negative 11. Over here, positive 17, 17 to 27 plus it is again negative 11. So all the three terms are negative 11. That means over here you're adding negative 11, negative 11 and minus 11. So common difference is minus 11 and the sequence is arithmetic. That's it. Now look at this problem. How about you pause the video now and try it by yourself, just like what we have done before. I hope you at least tried by pausing the video. Now we will look into it. So all you need to do is see the common difference. Over here it is 16. How do you find that? 12 minus, minus of minus 4 will become positive. So it's 12 plus 4, 16. 28 minus 12. Again it is 16, yes. But what about 42 minus 28? You can see this 4 and 10. So it's 14. So this is not an arithmetic sequence because there is no common difference. And hence, the answer is no. Similarly, please try them by yourselves and check the answers. Over here, the answers are as follows. Yes, yes, no and no. Over here, you can see there is no common difference. It's 0 0.3, 0 0.3. Then it is 0 0.6. No, it's not an uh, arithmetic sequence. Similarly, you can check the remaining. And over here also, please do check it by yourself. Pause the video, do it by yourself, and then confirm. Find the common difference for all, and then confirm the answers. The sixth topic is to relate geometric sequences to exponential functions. It might sound fancy, but what they want is basically to find few terms of the geometric sequence and graph it. And when you graph, you realize the graph is exponential function graph. Now we will see this. You have been told the sequence is a geometric sequence. So don't go to find the common ratio for all the terms. It's similar to arithmetic sequence. Only the thing is over here, a common ratio is being multiplied. Now, don't go to find 8 divided by 32 and 2 divided by 8. No, because they've already told it's a geometric sequence. Now, just look for simple numbers. Over here, 2 and 8 are simple. So, I'll do 2 divided by 8. That is 1 fourth or quarter or 0 0.25. So, this is the ratio. That is our step 1 to find the common ratio. And once we have found that, you can easily multiply this to the last term to get the next three terms. So 2 multiplied by a quarter is half. Half over here, how, what happens? Basically, multiply quarter means you divide by 4. So 1, 2 times. And then the same thing over here, you need to keep on multiplying the denominator by 4. It's multiply quarter. You can use a calculator. So it's 1 by 8. And then... 4, 8, 4 are 32, so 1 by 32. So these are the next three terms. It's not over, you need to graph them. When you graph them, the domain is always 1, 2, 3. It starts from 1 and it goes on until how many numbers you're, how many terms you're graphing. So here you have this domain because we have six terms to graph. 
one, two, three, four, five, six. Domain is always one, two, three, four, five, six. And over here, the range is these values. Now, when you graph them, look over here. This was a huge value, 32 at one, but then it drops down because you're multiplying by a quarter, eight, and then it's down, down, and this gives you an exponential uh, function look, uh, graph. So that's it. So this is how we solve it. Very basic, very simple. All you need to do is find the next terms and then graph them up. That's it. Remember, the domain is always starting from one, two, three. They have asked you a few terms. How many total terms are there? Six terms. So domain will be one to six. The first point, whatever the values are there, will be the y-axis. The domain is the x-axis for each number of terms. It's basically, this is A1, isn't it? This is A2, A3. So 1, 2, that is the domain. Now we will look into the problems which are mentioned in the exam scheme, 14 to 17. Do this by yourself. These They are all geometric sequence. So just find the next three terms. By finding the common ratio, you can easily find the next three terms. And then what you need to do is graph them up. Okay, so we either have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 terms. Similarly, find all the other terms. I'm sorry, there's a comma missing over here. 256, 512. You can do it by yourself and then graph it and then check the answer. So please do by yourself. Then only refer the answers to check uh, for, for checking your values. When you only solve more and more problems, you'll be thorough. Otherwise, you might be stuck during the final exam. In this topic, we are supposed to find the nth term for the arithmetic sequences. The nth term means kind of an explicit formula. It's given by a n equals a1 plus n minus 1 d. This is not explicit. Uh, I mean, when you solve for the nth term, that will be an explicit formula. It's not recursive. Now, we anyways, just remember this nth term a n formula. It's the first term plus n minus 1 depends on the n value and times the common difference. We will see a problem, how easy it is. Write an equation for the nth term for each arithmetic sequences over here. This is given over here as phi negative 13, negative 31. You do not need to find the common difference for everything. They have told this is an arithmetic sequence. Just find for the first value, negative 13 minus phi, it will be negative 18. That's it. So this must be added everywhere. Now you can see the D is negative 18. What is the first term? Phi. Why do we need this? Because we have to put it in the formula. The first term, phi, and the D value that is negative 18. <coughs> Sorry for my voice. Um, uh, now over here, all you need to do is substitute and simplify. That is phi, and over here you keep on multiplying. And uh, this is distributive property. You multiply this negative 18 to n, and you multiply the minus 18 to minus 1. It'll be positive 18. And then simplify as much as possible. You can see phi and 18 can be simplified. It'll become 23. So this a n is the simplified formula, and that is the nth term. So if you know n, say I want to find n for 15, all you need to do is a15 equals here instead of n you put 15 and multiply 18 times 15 plus 23 that's it so similarly we have one more problem here we don't have a sequence they have given a phi and d but the problem here arises because we do not know a1 what is the first term there are many ways to solve now this is the first thing to find a1 put the formula use the formula Whatever you know, substitute. You know, a n or a phi is uh, over here. You can put it as a phi is 19. First term is unknown. n is phi and d is 6. So all you're doing is substitute them. 18 equals a1 is the first term plus n is phi because over here it's mentioned and minus 1 d, d is 6. Now, if you're thinking, why is this a n? So now, whenever they mention, sorry, whenever they mention, say, a7 equals 10, that means the seventh term is equal to 10. You do not know the nth term. You can state this as the nth term. We can consider a n as 7 
and then substitute the value 10 over here. Okay, so what will be the n value? n value will be 7 and this will be 10 in, in this example. So that's what we have done. And now why we are doing this is to find the A1. Substitute and solve, you'll get A1. Just uh, simply uh, simplify this. 4 times 6 is 24. 19 over here, take 24 to the other side. It becomes minus 24 plus 19 equals negative 5. That's the first term. Now you have A1 and D. All you need to do is put the same formula again, A in formula, that is A1 plus n minus 1d and solve it up. This all you need to do is simplify distributive property 6 times n minus 6 and now simplify minus 6 and minus 5. The answer is minus 11, 6 and this is the correct answer. So this is the nth term, okay, nth of formula for the nth term. Similarly, please do solve these by yourselves. Wherever there is sequences, you need to find the d value, the common difference and then Use the first term. If the d value is not, uh, the sequence is not given, first use the formula, find a1, and again use the formula and find the nth term. Please do it by yourself, and then after you practice, solve it, and then check the answers. All the answers are shown over here, one by one. These are the answers. The eighth topic is similar to the previous topic only thing is here we are dealing with geometric sequence in geometric sequence we have r that is the common ratio here we need to remember this by a formula by heart you need to memorize this it is very simple the nth term of a geometric sequence is given by the first term multiplied by r which is the common ratio times to the sorry to the power n minus 1 so if you want to find the seventh term you need to know the first term a1 and then the r times 7 minus 1 to the power 6 so basically you're coming to this right so the first term multiplied common ratios to the power 6 times will give you the seventh term that's it we will look into the problems now you need to find the nth term this a n means nth term for each geometric sequence the a1 is 5, r is 5, and n is 8. How do we do this? Very simple, just remember the formula. Once you know the formula, just keep applying the values you know because you have to just find the nth term. So all you need to do is substitute the nth term. But over here they have mentioned n is 8, so we need to find a8, a to the power a, a subscript 8. Whenever we have a term below, it's called subscript. Whenever it's power, it's called superscript. Subscript and superscript. Now, A8, in simple, we can call, is equal to phi, that is A1, and R is also same, phi, the whole power, 8 minus 1, that is 7. All you need to do is substitute this phi to the power 7 is 7, 78,125. Multiplied with phi, you will get 390,625. It is very basic, very simple. All you need to do is substitute, put it in the calculator, solve. That is it. Now, similarly, please do try this by yourselves. Please do try it by yourself and then check for the answer. Don't worry, R can be negative, a fraction or a proper whole number or a natural number. It depends in different cases. So do solve it. At the end, you will get the answer. It can be the 75 by 128. Or you can press SD in your calculator and get this number. Similarly, these are the answers. Moving on to the ninth topic, we need to write repeating decimals as fractions. Now, decimals is something that is like 0 0.523. This is a decimal point and you have digits after decimal. Now, sometimes they might be recurring. You know, it's not... Uh, not like pi, you know, pi is infinite, but you know, you will have pi as 3.1415 and the numbers keeps on changing. But sometimes you can see there are, say, 1 divided by 3 or 33%, 33 divided by 100. What happens over here? The values will be 0 0.333. It just keeps on going, right? That 0 0.33, it's recurring, isn't it? 
but you can write it as a fraction as 33 by 100 don't you agree so this is the thing now what do we do is all we can uh what, what we can do over here is 33 percent means 0 0.333 it keeps on going we can do this recurring but now i know this is basically we can we can write it as a fraction 33 by 100 so how can we even relate this one now here it is not just 33 it's 33 by 100 okay it's very simple because it's 3333 now but over here it is 0 0.63 and again it'll be 63 63 and so on now, how will we relate this and this there is a method there's a shortcut as well there is many methods to solve one of the old method which we uh sorry now we are using this the first method the new method which is sum of an infinite series basically you know this is 0 0.63 0 0.0063 what this means is you are keep on adding 63663 right it just keeps on going so this is basically starting with 0 0.63 then you can add the remaining to 0 0.0063 and then you can add again plus 0 0.000063 and you can find the pattern this is how it works so now over here which is the first term first term is 0 0.63 which can be written whenever you have just two decimal points what do you do remove this to the other side one two how much is the decimal like basically what you do is when it's 0 0.63 multiply and divide by 100 because there are two decimals two digits after decimal point it will be 60 by 100 that is very simple now over here one two three four you can move this four to the right side that means multiply by ten thousand divide by 10,000 so we have this and it keeps on going so what is the first term here the first term is a1 that is 63 by 100 or you can write 0 0.63 my divided by 1 minus r how do you find r second term divided by the first term this divided by this just substitute over here I will just tell you again you need to divide this by this you can use these itself it's fine so 0 0.0063 divided by 0 0.63 what is the answer 1 by 100 so r is 1 by 100 now i will write this now you know 1 by 100 is basically 0 0.01 now you can use this in this sum formula this is the sum formula for uh geometric series okay so what do you do a1 the first term 0 0.63 divided by 1 minus 0 0.01 the answer is 7 by 11 so the answer over here would be 7 by 11 i'm assuming that you know this formula this is the sum series for infinite series of geometric series basically uh, you must be thorough with this so that's that's the thing now what if you forgot this formula there is a simpler method which is used in the previous grades if you recall maybe in cycle 2 in math you have done this this is the method which we have used before now this is the method basically this expands forever right 0 0.6 it just keeps on going right so let us assume this to be x value okay now multiply 100 on both the sides what's going to happen it's going to be 100x and over here you will have to multiply the move the decimal two times to the right or just use a calculator don't use the calculator it's so simple it'll be 63.6363 and it keeps on going now what you do is subtract x on both the sides over here in this just subtract x on both the sides it'll be 100 minus x that's 99x and we know x is 0 0.6363 so all these decimals can be subtracted removed because I'm subtracting 0 0.6363 and so on. So this side goes off. So you're remaining with 63 over here. What is x value? X is 63 divided by 99, right? Just take it to the other side. That is 7 divided by 11. So this is another method. So this is how it works. And what you can do is there's another trial and error method where you can just whichever is the two digits just divide that by 99 I'll, I'll show you some examples say for example this is the same thing say for example 0 
Now this line denotes that these particular digits are being repeated. This line over here up above tells that that's being repeated all the time. So what you do is for 0 0.35353 all you do is take that term zero sorry don't take that term take what is remaining over here what basically is remaining it's um, sorry take two digits whichever is right 35 and just divide it by 99 one less than 100 so that is the answer basically that's it so 39 by 100 over here now what about over here there is three digits right so all you need to do is take those three digits which will be repeating 642 divided by not 99 it should be 999 why because there are three digits so this is the answer you this is the simplified answer you you will have 642 divided by 999 whenever you write fractions you must write it in the simplest form so that is the answer so depending on the question you can easily find it now even the given question now you can pause the video and try it by the direct calculator method which I just now told you. So it would be basically here 6, 3 and since there are only two digits that's repeating continuously, 99, 7 by 11. So that's the thing. But please be, uh, you know, some problems if it's a single digit and it'll, this method will not work. So please remember to solve this. But generally, whenever they are repeating, how much terms are repeating, remember that. And that many divided by 999. So this is how we can easily solve the time. The tenth topic is the last topic in the part one of the exam scheme. It is to recognize recursive functions. They have told us to find three iterates of each function for the given initial value. Um, one thing they have mentioned, it's recursive. Recursive requires the previous term to go ahead. Now, iterates, first three iterates of each function. Basically, you're finding a function of its function. Over here, when it's given as a function, the initial value is given. So, it will be first function will be f of x0. All you need to do is put this 8 over here. That is the first iterate. Now for the second iterate, you need to do the same thing again, function of f of x0, function of function. But generally we consider this as x1 to make much easier sense. It's function of x1, that is f x2. Now the third iterate would mean another function, function of this entire thing. It'll be too long, so or, or, or else you can we can write it as function of x2 uh, sorry x1 you know function of x1 function of function of x1 or the easiest way is sorry my voice is a bit cranky uh, so i hope you understand what i'm trying to say function of x2 this is what would be the third iteration anyways if this is confusing don't worry we will solve it and now you will easily understand what is happening over here you have the function and the initial value, right? All you need to do is substitute the given initial value in this equation and solve. That would mean x1 is function of x0. Wherever x is, they just substitute the value 8 and solve it in the calculator. You will get the answer. It's very basic, so you can directly solve it. Now, what do you do next? You need to substitute this one, this value in this function instead of x. So it will be 5 times 42 plus 2. So it will be 2 and 12. And then they have told 3 iterates. So do again for the x3. Or just keep on doing it. Compose the function with itself. Now over here 212 goes in the place of x. And solve it. You will have 1062. That's, that's the answers. So that's how you easily solve it. Now, the three iterates, you should select these. These are the answers 42, 212, and 1062. Similarly, same method, same uh, way just now we did. Please solve these. Solve these by yourselves and then check the answers over here. So that's that's the thing. That, that's the end of the part one. Okay, there are a few more. I forgot about these. Same way, there is no difference. Don't, don't worry if it is 
and they get you half or something it's very simple i just do this for a couple of iterates so what you do is basically instead of uh, x over here you put this initial value so it'll be two times x square you can take it as they get you half or 0.5 it is the same thing because one divided by two is equal to 0 0.5 it's up to you now square this so use the brackets okay you can put the multiplication sign over here brackets plus uh that is open the bracket because it's negative i'll write 0 0.5 this time it's the same thing plus one the answer is one over here now how do you get the next one all you can do is remove this half there's a shortcut instead of doing it multiple number of times because it's a huge one right just put the answer and over here again put the answer and press equal to you'll get four now again when you press equal to you will get 37 and the next iterates would be these it just keeps on but now the problem is if you miss one then you won't get it so if at all you missed one you did one and you by mistake press something else then the answer won't be saved the answer will be the last answer which you saved if you have missed anything or if you're getting confused with the answer or if you're not getting it don't worry just type it in type the answer value one and then over here as one and then press equal to you'll get the answer then change it to four and you will get the answer just three iterates that's very simple to solve please solve it by yourself and then do check the answer this is the end of the part one the next set we will do 11 to 20 11 to 20 that's the part two and then the last three will be the writing it will be done soon please do stay tuned and if you're not yet subscribed to my channel please do subscribe and share it with your friends thank you one and all hi everyone welcome back to the part two of the end of term explanation videos if you're new to this channel a warm welcome to you i am justin d'souza your math teacher this is my channel best math where i explain mathematics math videos and problems in the easy and best way possible if you have not yet subscribed to my channel please do subscribe to it it would mean a lot to me and i want to take this time to thank all these subscribers all the students who like my videos who share the videos i'm very grateful for all of you i appreciate it a lot thank you guys now we will move on to the part two the first problem that is the 11th topic so now i'm sure you must have learned this method to you know identify and graph this classical curves by table method by all that methods now since this is classical curves you know the equations are weird i will tell you a shortcut method uh, you might be knowing this you may not be knowing this so wait until the end where you can learn a new method hopefully now here it is very very crucial to so uh, to know these standard forms otherwise you won't be able to solve them See, the standard forms in the polar graphs are varying just by little. So you need to be very cautious. Now, this is simple because, you know, you know, you have come across this a lot of times before as well. R equals A cos theta will always be a circle or even if it's a sine theta. But what is the difference? We know cos theta is relating to X is equal to like this. No, X is equal to R cos theta. We had this before in unit circle. So now, whenever we have cos theta, it will be relating to the x-axis. Now, if you look closely, cos theta uh, graphs are always with the x-axis. So it will be the right side or the left side. How do we know that? It's always in the x-axis, but which side? If A is greater than 0, that means A is positive. If it is plus 1, 2, or just 1 or nothing, you know, positive sign. Then it will be in the right side, positive side, whereas it's negative, then it will be in the left side. That's it. Same way with sine, because we remember from unit circles, so x is equal to r sine theta. Sorry, y is equal to r sine theta. Now, y is y axis. So we are dealing with the y axis. It will be upside if the value of a is positive, downside if it's negative. This is it. So now, what else? Lemasson. Uh, so the pronunciation is Lemasson. Uh, I believe it's French or Lemasson. So what about these? There are plenty of these. So even if you don't remember these, I'll tell you a shortcut later on. 
But now if you um, see there's something called cardioid as well. This might, you know, the, if you're thinking what's a cardioid, cardioid is a lamosone with a same, same form, you know, 2 plus, imagine we have 2 cos theta or it can be sine theta. If it is, look carefully over here, if it is the same A and B values, then we call it as a cardioid. If the value is 2 and 3, then it will be either of these. Okay, then we will look into this in a while. So just remember these standard forms. Then we have roses. Roses standard form is important. It will usually, it will always be more than 2. Okay, or 2, sorry. It starts with 2, but generally 2 or more. It'll, it can be the cos or sine theta. Now here, what happens is, you need to look at this n. If n is an odd number, it does not change the number of petals. If n is 3, for example, it will have 3 petals. If n is 5 or n is 7, it will have the same number of petals. Whereas if it is an even number, like 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 or any of these, you have to multiply it by 2. The number of petals will be 2, over here it will be 4, 8, 12, 16 and so on. See now n was 4, the number of petals are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Same way over n is 2, it will be 4 number of petals. This is the difference. Please remember the standard form again and then, okay, let, sorry for that. Now back over here, lemniscate. Lemniscates are very unique and easy to recognize. Why? Because look at the standard form. It is R squared equals A squared cos 2 theta. If they give you a problem with R squared, you know it's lemniscate. Just that if it is cos theta, it will be along X axis. Sine theta will be along Y axis. And then we have spiral of Archimedes, one of the most beautiful spirals. Now we have this standard form as R equals A theta plus B. Now this B can be any number, 1, 2, or it, it, it may not be even given. So this is it. So now whenever theta is greater than 0, it will go like this. And if it's less than, it will be go, going the opposite direction altogether. Now, uh, okay. So after this, now what we need to do is realize all these standard forms. Once you understand all these standard forms, just look into the question. They will ask you a question like this. You know, you need to identify the curve by each equation and symmetry zero and all that. But generally, they're asking graphing for you in the exam. Now, one second, let me just go over here. They ask you the graphs like this in your exam scheme question. So what you can do is looking at this, looking at this, you can easily find the graph. How? You can do the table method. It's up to you. You can restrict the domain. You can do the table method. And if you want that videos, it's already, I believe it's there in the playlist of the general lessons. You can check it out in the same uh, channel. If you go to the playlist, all the term three lessons have been, uh, you know, in detail explanations are there. You can figure it out over there. And you can use the table, uh, table shortcut that is using the calculator over here. More, seven. And then you can use this function for table, you know, getting the tables. But now I will tell you an easy shortcut. Standard form will be in terms of r square equals 4 square sine 2 theta. You know, this is lemniscate. Since it's sine theta, it will be along the xy line. Now, this 4 means the radius. See, it's 4 square, right? From here to here, it will be 4. Okay. And then... It's sine theta, so obviously the maximum distance will be 4. That's it. So you can easily find it. Otherwise, there's one more method. Take out your calculator, and all you need to do is over here, here, look at this. This is, uh, this is the, uh, you will have four graphs, isn't it? Eliminate all the graphs which are not lemniscate. There might be one, uh, one or two graphs, two, maybe one graph like this, and one more graph like this. This is for cos theta, you can eliminate that. But in case you have graphs like this only, two graphs like this, what do we do? Take any theta value. I will choose the theta value, say, over here as pi by 6. Now, just put pi by 6 in this equation and take the square root, 16, sine 2 into pi, that is shift and this, by 6. Close the bracket, solve it. What is the value over here? It is 3.7. Now, if you're thinking, why I put the square root? 
because over here we need r value the radius we don't want r square so take square root on both the sides now 3.7 is it true pi by 6 yes it is almost 3.7 yes you can choose any other pi value you will definitely get the same answer if you put pi by 2 it will be 0 if you take uh, say pi by 3 or any you will get the exact answers so this is how we can solve them easily if you take say pi by 4 over here you will get this 4 and so on so please do try it i'll just change this to pi by 4 and you get 4 why because pi by 4 is over here and this is the answer so this is how you can directly check which is the correct answer. Only one graph will have all the points matching and that's your answer. So now over here similarly, you don't need to do that. You can just realize over here this is cos theta circle at the right side because it's positive. The radius is 1 by 3 total. That's it. Here this is spiral of Archimedes. Now over here again you can do the same thing. If you're getting confused on this, okay how to do it. Let's choose a value. I'll choose pi by 3 for now. And put over here, r is 4 into, make sure it's in radian mode. If you don't know how to make it radian mode, shift mode and 4. My calculator was already in radian mode, so I did not change it for the previous problem. If you're not getting the answer, it is because of the radian mode. Now 4 into theta, I'm using pi by 3 plus 1. What is the answer? It is 5.18. If you look closely, this is 20, this is 10, and this is somewhat 5. So at pi by 3, it'll be about 5. Now, this is not so magnified, but you, you can check your answers and magnify it. Now, okay, you, you can't see the magnifying. It's fine. You, you should just keep adding 2 pi. Over here, I'll just add 2 pi co-terminal angles you know this spiral of archimedes keeps on rolling see it keeps on going now if i add 2 pi i'm going to get this value let me check it should be around 30 i guess yes absolutely okay uh, because it's touching that that's why it was easy to recognize you can see over here it's touching this so 20 and uh, 40 between is 30 so it was 30.2 now, similarly, you can test for other values. You will get the same answer. Now, over here, it's just two circles. But if it was one more circle, you can just add 4 pi over here. If you add 4 pi, then it would be 55. Say so this would go and it would be over here. So this is how you can easily check the values. Now, over here, you don't need to do anything. Just eliminate the other options. That's it. Over here we have rows. You can easily understand this is 4 means 8 petals will be there. And now over here this is 2. So the radius would be 2. Over here this is the 2 value. Same way please do try the others. This is a, a cardioid. Over here it's lemniscate with cos. And again spiral of Archimedes. You can directly use the shortcut method and find the correct answer. You do not need to graph. You do not need to break your head remembering all that. Just use your calculator, eliminate the options. This is the 11th topic, so you will have four options. Eliminate them and choose the correct answer. The 12th topic is to convert equations to rectangular form. And then they have also asked to graph it. Now, it is about equations, but still the coordinate formulas are very handy. This polar uh, conversion to rectangular to polar coordinates the formula which was r equals square root x square plus y square or you can consider r square equals x square plus y square this is important and crucial and then over here theta equals tan inverse y by x so okay this is uh, interesting i'll come to it in a while or it'll be either tan theta equals y by x so these are the basic formulas. Now, whenever x is greater than 0, this is for coordinates only when the radius and the theta is given. If it is greater than 0, it's only this much. If its x value is negative, then we add pi. But now we can ignore that for a while. Oh, yeah, these are the formulas. Now, if at all you have sine or say you have um, cot, then it is 1 by tan. So 1 by tan theta, that would be x by y. Or if you have secant, it's 1 by cos. And then you can easily try and solve it. Now let's go through a few of the basic problems. Generally, these type will be given where angle is theta. So now how would you solve it? 
So you can take, uh, you need, you know the formula that is tan theta is y by x. So what you need to do is take tan on both these sides and you will get an equation of tan theta equals tan pi by 6. Now you can solve this, you know left side is x by y by x, sorry it is y by x, always uh, sine by cos and sine is y, cos is x, that's y, okay. So we here y is basically sine, x is cos and over here tan theta is y by x, what is tan pi by 6? You can do tan pi by 6. But now remember, if it's in degree mode, you will get in terms of degree. If this is, uh, I mean, sorry, if it's uh, in degree mode and you put pi, you won't get the correct answer, basically. You need to change it to radians. Now you will get this as a proper one. It's a radian. Uh, you need to change the mode to radian when you're solving such problem. You will get y by x is equal to root 3 by 3. You, you know that rectangular equations are always written as y equals some coefficient x. So just take the x to the other side, you will get root 3 by 3. So this is how we solve it. Now graphing is simple. You can graph this by table or many methods. But the easiest of all is just look at this. Theta is equal to pi by 6, right? So since there is no radius given, you have to just draw a straight line from positive and the negative side at pi by 6. That's it. So if it's a graph, you can easily eliminate the other graphs and easily get the correct answer. Let's look at the other type where only radius is given. Now this is again so easy. R is 7. Just draw a circle of 7 centimeter, 7 uh, radius. That's it. Now anyways, technically to solve it is to use the formula. Now since R is known, you can you know the formula, the closest to uh, R is R squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. Now, what do you do? Square on both, you basically square on both the sides of this equation. Here you'll get r squared is equal to 7 squared. r squared is x squared plus y squared. Don't take x to the other side. Just look at the equation now. We had learned in the last term, uh, the conic section was the chapter name. We had learned the circles, equations of circles and graphing circles. And that is it. So x squared plus y squared is the equation for the circle with the radius root of 49, that is 7. So this is a circle equation. Draw a circle of radius 7. That's it. Or r is 7, so draw a circle at 7. So if the graphs are there, it's very easy. Otherwise, you should just substitute and convert. Similarly, you can solve this. Now, if you had watched the last video, the topic number 11, if you not watched it, I would highly recommend you to pause the video, go back and watch it. You, you might have recalled over there, if you see certain equations such as r equals a sine theta, it's a circle graph in the vertical axis upside because this is positive. That's it. Otherwise, you can just convert this to x squared y squared and then you can solve it. So we just now whatever we did it over here, same way you can just simplify this because R is the or instead of all that, remember this equation and simplify it. It's very, very easy. And uh, now there is one thing over here. If it's theta equals minus pi by 3, you, we, we did it. Take tan on both the sides and solve it. Tan is y by x and then simplify. R is 10. It's very simple. They are all direct ones, you know. Even over here, it's the same thing. Now, you must remember if it's tan, cosecant, secant, they're all straight lines. Either you can apply over here. Tan theta is what? Y by x. Take x to the other side and then graph this. Y by x is a linear equation. It will be a straight line. Whereas over here, where, where it's cosecant, you know what's cosecant? 1 by sine. Sine is just y, isn't it? So basically you solve it. y is equal to so much. Now, there is one more way. If it's tan over here, you can just take tan inverse 4. Now, here if you press, if you keep it in radian, this is in terms of radian. Instead of that, make it in degree. So it's much easier for us to understand. It's 75.96. Can you see this? From 0, this is 60. It's just in the middle. Yes, it's about 75, 76 degrees. So this is one more way to easily find it out. So it's up to you. There are various ways. Otherwise, you can just plug in some values. Now, 
plug in some theta values over here and you will get the radius the exact same radius now if you put zero over here in uh, you can change this to one by sine and solve it you will get these values so there are various methods various tricks you know from uh, if you watch the videos in continuity you will realize there are so many methods to directly find the correct graphs you can use any of it otherwise you can just see the you know straightforward solving method using formulas that is also possible anyhow you will get the same answer please make sure you solve them by yourselves and then check the answers so these are the answers the 13th topic is to convert complex numbers into polar form it is very important to know a few of the basic formulas before we get into the topic that is convert that is the polar form or the trigonometric form of a complex number this is important because z equals r cos theta plus i sin theta this is how your answer must be and then this is the uh, this is basically the absolute value formula and then we also need to know the argument argument is basically the angle theta so these are the formulas for r or uh, the radius or the absolute value which is given by absolute z it's square root of a square plus b square where a is r cos theta b is r sin theta where theta is to be uh, is the angle can be found out by tan inverse b by a now remember carefully there is an important thing if the value of a is negative we had seen in the last video the same thing over here if the value of a is negative we must add pi now sometimes we consider this a as x and b as y it's the same thing tan inverse y by x but however it is given now let's see a problem we can write this this uh, you know whatever is given to us can be expressed as a plus b i that means the first term a value is minus 6 and b value is 8 and now we can use the formula of absolute value that is r equals root of a square plus b square and solve for r that is the radius is 10 okay what is remaining the theta value is remaining but look over here the angle is also called as argument the angle is a value is negative so angle the tan inverse b by a plus pi is very important this can be pi or 180 degree because it's one and the same now just type it type it in the calculator you will get the values so now tan inverse 8 divided by minus 6 close the bracket plus pi now since my calculator is in radian mode i don't need to worry otherwise you need to press shift mode and 4 because I'm using pi, this is the radians. Theta is 2.21 radian. Now, all you need to do is write it in this form. Most of the time, most of your answers, almost all your answers are always in radian mode, not in degree. If you want to convert this to degree or to divide by 180, write it in terms of pi, big procedure. So just convert your calculator to radians and solve it up. Now, write the values over here z or z will be same r is found out to be 10 cos what is the theta value 2.21 i sine 2.21 this is it you can check your answer this is the simple way to check whatever answer you got just multiply solve this first multiply this 10 inside what's going to happen it'll be 10 multiplied by cos of 2.21 it should be in radian mode because this is in radians and solve it it is now we are we have not considered all the values so that's why it's almost six really if you uh you know take more values about four it'll be 5.99 minus 5.999 it is almost equivalent to six and even over here because we are rounding off it may not be accurate so it's 8.0 it should be 8.000 something if you take more decimal values you'll get 8.000 and then some values but if you take the exact value then you will get the exact answer so that's it now over here we added pi let's see a value with positive a same procedure find the a and b value and then now use the absolute value formula find the radius r r is 11.4 and now you need to find the angle of the argument just by using the formula theta is tan inverse b by a now you'll get tan inverse 7 by 9 
the answer is 0 0.6 again in radiant mode tan inverse 7 by 9 the value is 0 point see now there is so many other points which we are not considering so while checking it will not be accurate enough now all you need to do is put it in this form and that's it now I will I will show you here if you multiply this 11.4 into cos answer which was just the theta value it will be more accurate still it is not accurate why because this is also not accurate enough so I hope you're getting what I'm trying to say see you will get if you put this first part you will get the question back it's almost close but it's not exact value if you change the size change it to sign as well you should get the i part that is over here it's almost close but not the exact because we don't consider all the decimal points but some uh, now anyways this is how we solve it that is it that's the procedure now this is your answers you you can even check directly on this see now these same method you can solve now always remember the first part the cost part is the real part and i is the imaginary part which is given in sign okay now you will have many options so solve it by yourself and then check the answers now see for example over here this one it's in pi by 4 and it's 4 root 2 you can check the answer just by multiplying 4 root 2 into cos pi by 4 and the answer must be equal to 4 that's it and sine also must be equal to 4 now this is a check but see the thing is let me try over here it may not work exactly because now root 5 times sine 2.68 2.68 now over here it is 0 0.995 it's almost one but it's not exact but if you do it for all the four values you will get some answers which is very close to this is very close to one so i'll consider it to one and if i change it to cos if i change it to cos it must be close to minus two so cos it's almost minus 2 so this is one way to directly find the answer if you cannot do all the methods now imagine in the exam you forgot the uh, argument formula that is theta is tan inverse or you got confused with a negative value and all that then you can directly do this or you f forgot the modulus value so then you can uh, do this but try to follow this method it's very simple all you need to do is the modulus modulus or absolute value is the same thing this formula then the argument if a is positive just so much if a is negative you need to add pi and then write this polar form formula if not just look into all your four options and then start solving each of them and see which gives you the question only one will be the correct answer others can be uh, ignored see this sometimes you know it will be plus two so you can you should remember when you multiply you must get this exact value only one option will be correctly giving you this question back so this is how we can do it please do solve these problems by yourselves practice them and then check the answers don't directly see these answers after you listen to the explanation, solve them and then practice and then refer to these answers. Let us now move to the next topic that is topic number 14. It is to determine whether sequences are convergent or divergent, the different types of sequence. Now you will be given this question. Uh, this is an explicit form, a formula or explicit equation is given. All you need to do is find the terms find the terms starting from one uh, initially find few terms over here eight terms are found out how do we find the terms very simple you need just to put some values of n and find the terms now over here let's start with one solve it plus 12 you will get the answer nine and then you can just keep changing this to two three and so on three over here and you can realize the sequence is arithmetic it's from 9 6 3 0 minus 3 and so on you're keeping on subtracting negative 3 that's it 
Now, when you, you need to graph this because it's very hard for you to just look at this and tell. But yes, you can understand from here, the values are just decreasing. Isn't it? It just keep on going downwards. So what is that sequence? It is a diverging sequence. What does divergent and convergent mean? Convergent means it is coming close to something. It is coming like this, converging to some, becoming one basically. If two roads are converging, they keep on coming closer and they join and become the same road. They just become the same road and wherever they go, it will be the same road. But initially there were two separate roads and then they converge to become one. Two branches becoming one. Whereas divergent is other way around, it's two things that never comes together. They will never touch each other. One thing is just going other side and one more thing is other side. They don't have, they, they are never going to come together and join or become one. So over here you can see this is a divergent. It just keeps on decreasing. That's it. Even without graphing, you can easily understand. So this was a divergent sequence. Now over here we have another question where we have, uh, say, this one, first term. And then why the first term is given? Because over here they have given a recursive formula. Recursive means... You need to know the previous term to find the next one. In the last problem, I told this is an explicit form. Why? Because you can use any n value and get any term. I can get a7 just by putting n as 7. But over here, can I directly get a7 in this? a7 will be equal to negative half a to the power 7 minus 1. That's why I need to know a6 initially then i can find the next term that is called a recursive repetitive recursive whereas if you directly can find any term it it is explicit now that is that knowledge is required further on but for now we will just start solving the terms how do you solve the terms very simple they have given you the first term so don't put this as one you need to start from the next term if i need to solve for a2 it will become negative half n minus 1. That is 2 minus 1 becomes 1. So half of 1. So basically you're halving it. Halving it. So divided by 2. Or you can just write multiply 1 by 2. I forgot the negative sign. Okay, let me just type it as it is. It is negative half multiplied by 36. Now it is 18. Next term if you are to find the a3 you need to multiply negative half with the previous term that is 18 but this time it'll be negative 18 so what happens over here it'll be minus 18 and the answer is 9 then you are to multiply 9 it becomes 4.5 then 2.25 and then it just reduces so now over here if you look at it you will get some negative values some positive values that's fine but keep uh, if you plot those points what's happening there is a variation, huge variation. It's jumping up, down, up, down. But eventually, it will come close towards zero. So, we are the R value, the common ratio we got is half, isn't it? It's basically negative half. So, this, whenever is between zero to one, it will be a conversion, basically. So, what happens is, it will come close to a single value. See over here, this is, if you keep on finding the values, it will be 0 0.000 some values. So it is almost corresponding to zero, both the, you know, uh, it's coming to a single value basically, and we can tell it's closing on to zero. So that's why it is convergence series over here. Now we will do one more over here. It's very straightforward. You need to find the values. You, you can just, uh, this is an explicit form. So just put in values A1, put one over here instead of N, you'll find this A2, put the value, you'll find, you'll find a few values. Just find some random few values. And now plot them. You can see whenever there is odd numbers, it is having negative values. Whereas even numbers, it has positive values. Let us plot them. Over here, now, Think for a while, is it a convergent or a divergent? Because it's coming over here close to same value. It's coming to 0 0.2444, I guess. And over here also around that same line. So what do you think is this? If you have thought this is convergent because it's coming towards the same value, 
it's not coming to a single value it's not coming towards same both are not coming same they're going in different ways they're diverging from each other so this this is divergent why because they both are not coming to the same point whereas they are just diverting and they are in their own ways over here so that is divergent the sequence is divergent similarly you can try this find in some of the uh, values over here the equation is given now what you need to do put in the a1 and find the next term so if you, if you want to find a2 over here that is 1.5 times a1 because n minus 1 so you will find plenty of values let me just show you it'll be 1.5 times 4 and now for the next value you should just change the 6 to uh, 4 to 6 and then it'll be 9 now since the r value over here is more than 1 keep on finding new answers now i'll just change this to answer because it'll just keep on finding give you the new values so what's happening it just keeps on increasing it's not stable it is diverging if you plot a graph it just keeps on increasing like this it just keeps on going up this is a divergent same way you need to find all the others and you you will come to know what's the answers this would be convergent i believe because over here you have divided by it's half uh, not half the r value if you find values and then plot you will come to know so please do it by yourself and then check for the answers over here you should you you can graph them and then easily find which is divergent and convergent so this is it don't worry about oh this is a big equation no it's very simple all you need to do is find the terms find at least six to eight terms you know and then you will get a better picture just don't you know just don't find four values and tell okay i know this no find some values maybe eight to ten values or at least six values and then you will get an idea if you just plot the points you will you can briefly understand what is the graph and then you can tell what is convergent and what is divergent solve them by yourselves and then check for the answers over here that's the end. If you have any doubts, please put them in the comment section. And in the next video, we will go to the topic number 15. We now move on to the 15th topic, which is the easiest among all topics in the part 2. Now, there are plenty of ways to find the arithmetic series using the formula and everything. But for now, in the other, other type of problems, you have to use the formula. But in this case, when the summation is given, you do not need this you can directly solve using calculator i will show you the calculator method directly all you need to do is use the summation that is shift and this symbol and then write this as it is but you do not have the variable k you need to add the variable x minus 2 and it starts from 1 until 16 you're finding the sum from the terms 1 to 16 for this particular equation the answer is 512 similarly you can find the other answers just use shift and this symbol and then all you need to do is type in the equation let me try this equation for example minus 3 there is no k you need to add x plus 2 and then type 0 to 12 all you need to do is press equal to the answers are there so do try it by yourself and then check for the answers. One of the easiest topic because that is it. See you in the next topic. We will move on to the 16th topic. This is on geometric sequences. Now the formula for the nth term of geometric sequence is given as a n equals a1 r to the power n minus 1. Now we need to apply that formula and solve the geometric means now i'll tell you what is geometric means now geometric means basically basically means okay there's lots of means uh the terms within it so now if you start from two and one two five zero i have to find three geometric means that means three terms within it see in your questions you might get like this or you might get like this like question marks so over here you can see there are three geometric means so here also they have asked three geometric means now this is your starting term or the first term a1 since there are three geometric means you can count one 
2, 3, 4, and 5. So this is your a n or a phi. And we need to find the remaining terms. But how can you find the terms without knowing the d value, that is, the common difference value? It is very simple. You can use the nth term formula. So n is equal to 5. Why? Because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Or you can also do, this is the first and the last term that is given to us. And they have told three more terms needs to be solved. So n is 5. To, you, to find the r, the step 2, you need to do this formula. That is the nth term of a geometric sequence. A n is equal to the first term. A 1 is the first term multiplied with r. r is the geometric ratio and then power n minus 1. Now, all you need to do is substitute because we know the a n value is 1, 2, 5, 0. And that is the fifth term. That's why n is 5 minus 1. What is the first term? That is 2. You can directly put it in the calculator and solve this. You can directly do it. But if not, you know how to do it. Instead of r, you can put x. And then just type it entirely and press shift and solve. You'll get the answer. It is 1, 2, 5, 0. You can type this in calculator. Press shift and solve. You will get the answer directly. Otherwise, if uh, how to do it is simplify this. Take the 2 to the other side. It will be divided by 2. So you will get 625. 5 minus 4 is uh, 5 minus 1 is 4. And cube, not radical, 4th the power of radical, 4, root 4 on both the sides will give you r over here it will be plus or minus because this is an even power. So that means now there is a problem. Not, not a problem. There is plus or minus r. Why? Because this power was even. Whenever you take even root, even root like this, if it's 2, 4, 6 of any number, you must remember that when you solve this, it will be plus or minus answer okay so therefore the r can be either positive 5 if if it is positive 5 multiply 2 times 5 you're going to get 10 again 10 times 5 you can see over here positive 5 is multiplied and you're getting this answers but what about the minus 5 it might be minus 5 as well so you need to have both these answers so this is it i'll just re recall over here the root the power is even power whenever you uh, use the radical to remove even power there will be plus or minus if this was odd say r to the power 3 then you're solving say 27 this would be just 3 or if it was minus 27 it can have okay it should be 3 over here it can have negative values inside the radical as well. If it's odd power, it would be minus 3. It's, the, uh, it's not plus or minus. It's separate. So this is the thing. Now, the geometric means are these. So you can try this by yourselves and then check for the answers. You can see there will be even power and you will get these answers. Why? Because there is phi terms. N is all phi over here. The power will be n minus 1. The power will always be 4 when it is odd terms. Okay. Now, here you can see there are how many two geometric means. That means a1 is 3, a n is 3, 7, 5. All you need to do is put it in the formula and solve. It will be 3, 7, 5 equals 3 r to the power. Now, there are four terms, two geometric means and the starting and the last term. This is a power 4, a n is a, a 4, sorry, because the fourth term, it will be 4 minus 1. This r is cubed. So then you don't get plus or minus, you'll just get the answer. Now, since it's positive over here, you will just get positive answer. So that's the thing. Over here, since the first number was negative, this will be minus. You will get a negative and you, you should keep on multiplying. Do solve them just like what you have seen over here in this detailed method. Just change the values over here and solve and you will get the answers. So that's it for this topic.
Please stay tuned for the next topic. The 17th topic is on geometric series. You will have to find the terms over here. You know the series means summation. There are two formulas for series. It depends whether the first, first term must be there. First term and the common ratio must be there. But if n value is given, then you can use this summation formula. Whereas if a n, the nth term is given, this is the summation formula. You need to remember these formulas. They are very important. Sn means summation for the nth term. Uh, what exactly does that mean? Now let me have, uh, let's take a geometric series. 1 plus 2, where r is 2. I'm just uh, multiplying by 4. Okay, let us stop it over here. Now, this keeps on going, right? 1, 2, 3, it's infinite. But we can find the sum. Say if I tell S of 2, that means sum of these two terms, 2 plus 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. If I tell S of 4, that is all the summation of all these numbers which I've written, 8 plus 4, 12, 14, 15. But what if I tell you summation of uh, 21? It's very hard. You can't sum it, right? So with the information of R, the first term, and you can directly, and the N value, the which term, that is the N is 21 over here. So you can easily find the summation. So that is why we are using this. Now let us look into the problem. They are very, very simple and straightforward. You're supposed to find the first term, that is A1, in the geometric series, for which they have given the summation Sn, N, and R. Look over here. They have given Sn, A, Sn, N, and R. That is, this formula must be used. Why? Because we don't have A, N, right? They have given the Sn. Summation is given. N is given. R is given. All you need to know is to choose the correct formula. See, the first one is the correct formula in this case. So how do you know that? You need to memorize all the formulas. I mean, not all, just two formulas over here. In the first formula, you can see A1 minus A1 Rn. So whenever there is again A1 repeated, R to the power nth term is there. Whereas in the other formula, it's A1 minus An and only R, there is no power. So that is the difference. So over here, Use the first formula and now just do the substitution. 133116, that is 13116. And A1 is unknown. Fine, but R is known to be 3, N is 7. And just substitute and solve. You can directly solve it in the calculator as well over here. You can just use the calculator. Now, type this as it is. 13116 equals... A1 is unknown. Let's put x minus x into 3 to the power 7 divided by 1 minus 3. Sorry, 3 to the power 7 divided by 1 minus 3. It's minus 2. Or you can write it as it is. Shift and solve will give you the answer. The answer is 12. So that is it. So it's very simple and it's the 17th topic. So directly use the calculator you will get the answer. So understanding which formula to use is very, very crucial. So you can simplify as it is, like with the simplification, you will get the same answer. Here, I just want to note that A1 and A1 is common. So A1 is removed out. That's why we are getting this. And then we simplify it. We will look into some of these problems. Now, here you can see there's a difference. Here, they have given R and N n is given here a n is given here you need to use the first formula here you need to use the second formula in the second formula it is a1 minus a n r whereas in the i'm telling about the numerator and it's one minus r uh, it's uh, this one second is a n c a n is required so remember this and what do we do in the first one it is same like this but only thing is it'll be this part will change to a1 rn that's the difference so remember which formula to substitute do the same substitution you will get the answer please check your answers over here but do them by yourselves because they are very easy very straightforward write the formula 
do the substitution and directly put in the calculator and you will get the answers. Moving on to the 18th topic, it is again on geometric sequence and series, but now we are dealing with infinite geometric series. Now, what is infinite geometric series? So say, for example, I have R value of phi and the first term, this is R, and I have the first term, one. The terms would be one, phi, 25, 125, and you can start finding the other terms. It'll be 625 and so on. It goes on, right, till infinity. Can you find the sum? Can I find the entire sum of this? No, it's not possible, right? But let me change this. Okay, that was bad. Uh, let me remove only these. And the r, let me make it to 0 0.5 instead of 5. Now, the first term is 1. Next will be 0 0.5. Next will be 0 0.25. 0 0.125, 0 0.625, and it goes 0 0.0625, I guess. Yeah, and it goes on. So, what is happening? It is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. It becomes nearly zero. Now, imagine there's a cake. Imagine there's a cake. So, you can cut it into half, right? And we can cut this again into half, and this again into half, again one more half. How many times can you cut into halves? You can go infinite. And if you start adding the weights, what is the total? Now imagine uh, first was 1 kg, half kg, quarter, one, you know, 125 grams, then 67.5 six, grams, and it keeps on reducing, right? So, but still, you can add all those sums, and you should get a total of 1 kg itself. So what you understand over here is if the R value, certain R values, you can find the sum. That is, if the R value is less than 1, it must be less than 1 or less than, uh, it can't be equal to 1 because then it would be the same number. It should be less than 1. But what if I have negative 2? It's less than 1, but still it doesn't work, right? Because it'll be huge, huge, huge numbers. Uh, that also doesn't make sense. Because if I have 1, next one would be minus 2. Next would be plus 4, minus 8. Doesn't make sense. So this also, it's not possible to find some. So R value must be, the magnitude of R value must be less than 1. That means it can be negative 0 0.5, negative a positive 0 0.5 fine but it can't be more than this one number in the sense you can't have negative 1.1 no this is not gonna work you won't have a sum so only when r value is in this constraint you can find the sum and the geometric C, uh, series infinite geometric series formula is given by s equals a1 divided by 1 minus r that's it now we will see a problem look at this these are the terms given First step is find the R value. How do you find R? Term 2 divided by the term 1. Divide this term. You can use your calculator directly and find it. So you just have to do 6 divided by 15. And again, you can divide this by 2 thirds. And the answer is 3 by 5. 3 by 5 means 0 0.6. So this is less than 1. Okay, this does obey this rule and therefore now we can find the formula using, we can find the sum using the formula that is S equals the first term divided by 1 minus the common ratio. Now all you're doing is substituting and get the answer. The answer over here is 2, over here it is uh, 5 thirds. You can directly find the answer. Just put everything in the formula. It's 2 by 3 divided by 1 minus 3 divided by the fraction symbol phi. The answer will be directly 5 thirds. So if you sum the sequence, you'll get 5 thirds. Now let's look into one more similar problem. Here, 6, 9, 13.5. Just looking at this, you can tell there is no answer for this, right? Why? Because the R value, R value, is greater than it's 1.5 it's greater than 1 if you want you can try this this whatever you do will be in 
it's minus 1.5 and over here it is 6 this 12 let's see is it correct the a1 now this is the same formula a1 a1 divided by 1 minus r so r value was how much 1.5 a1 is 6 is this correct no it's no it's wrong this doesn't make sense why because the r value was more than one this is divergent series the other times whenever the r value is less than when when it follows this rule it will converge to one single point therefore we can find the series whereas this is just diverging either down or up or two different values where we cannot solve so there is no sum similarly try all these problems by yourselves and then check for the answers uh, please pause and do it by yourself. I'll show you the answers now. The sum doesn't exist for these two. And then the answers. The last one also no sum. And these are the answers. Please solve them by the method which I just now told you. And then verify your answers. Now we move on to the 19th topic. It is one of the most trickiest topic. But there is a shortcut method. So wait till the end. You can easily solve this and easily get marks for this. Um, but let me show you the exact and natural method how to do this. So it is about recognizing and using special sequences. If it is just recognizing and use, using special sequences, it's okay. You can do it. And then finding a recursive formula for that, it's a bit hard. Now, if it is a just normal arithmetic sequence or a geometric sequence, you have the recursive formula over here these are the ones if you're thinking what is formulae formulae is plural for formula now if it is one formula we just call it formula that e denotes many like many canon so like that that's formulae anyways over here a n equals a n minus one plus d as you can see over here d is common difference and that is for arithmetic sequence R is for the common ratio geometric sequence, ge geometric recursive formula. But let's do these problems. It's very simple. You should see which sequence these are. Obviously, by now, you know this is an arithmetic sequence because over here, 8 is being added throughout and the D value is 8. And all you need to do is write the recursive formula like this because in arithmetic sequence, the previous term is added by D, common difference, and you get the next term. So over here, just mention for this sequence, the starting term is A1. The first term is crucial. That's it. Now, the next one over here is a geometric sequence because it's not arithmetic. If you start dividing, you find the same number over here. Start dividing two, and you can divide other ones also. You will find it is having a common ratio of 3.5. So if you multiply six, uh, 16 by 3.5, keep on multiplying, you'll get this answer. Uh, you'll get this sequence. So then all you need to do is recursive formula for geometric sequence, r times a n minus 1. Only r is the uh, substitution. That is it. That's the answer. But you need to write the first term, a1 is 16. So you need to mention that over here. This is easy, arithmetic sequence, geometric sequence. But what about these? Now, for example, over here, the common difference 7. But no, it's not the same. Is it being multiplied? No, it's not the same multiplication. What are we doing over here? These are all crazy. Now, it, it took me really a long time to figure out a few of these. And some of them, it was so hard for me because now who would know cubic numbers? I mean... I then realized it because the difference is too much. It should have been cubic. But initially, I couldn't figure this out. I figured out this one because, you know, this was uh, similar to square and it was near to squares. It is something square minus 1 because two, uh, over here you get 4, and then 16 minus 1, 225. And this was okay to figure out. But many of them, these, it takes time. It takes a lot of time and it gets confusing. See, the answers are so so ridiculous right how do we know this now what you need to do is first of all you will have four options because this is in part b so you need to match this a1 i'm sure almost all the options will have the a1 as the first term itself so this is very important a1 okay 
what about the next thing you it's very hard for you to manually find out the exact uh, say for example exact sequence what you can do is you just put this a and start solving the numbers you need to take out your calculator select one of the terms in the or four options select one of the term now i will choose this one all you need to do is instead of a n start with the first term oh, okay over here there is there is one important thing they have not written a n minus one or anything they have just written as n plus one it is similar to this this is as equivalent as a n equals to a n minus one plus two because over here it's one extra and this is the previous term so it's just the same don't worry now if you're substituting the first term over here a1 over here will be a2 so it's the same thing so now to find the next term of the sequence all you need to do is substitute the first term 2 into 3 plus 2 are you getting getting the answer okay yes but you might get for more than two or one or two options the same thing which is the correct answer then then instead of a n you can just change and put the next term 8. Am I getting it correct? Yes. Again, change this term, put the 18 number. Whichever sequence, you know, other sequences will just give you wrong after one or two tries. So whichever sequence give you the correct answer is the correct one. Another way is if there are plenty of numbers, say for example over here, 1 divided by 4 into first time, you must write the first term, 32 plus 4 okay now when i press equal to i'll get 12 now instead of changing it all the time what i can do is i can just remove this and put the answer because the saved answer is 12 i'm getting 7 and now this will be saved as answer if i press equal to i'll get the next answer same way i can find many number of sequences now this is the thing about it so i hope this is okay so here you can see there is a common ratio and something else so it is not very easy to find out it will take time especially in such cases so just put the first value you will have the sequence you will have four options put the first value over here and find the next term and do it for a while and you will find only one correct answer so the same thing over here because now for example over here four times a n minus three it's hard it's not it's not impossible you can but it'll take a long long time to do it so that's why use the shortcut method which is very very easy and you will get it very soon so this is it for that topic number 19 i hope this is clear i'll repeat the shortcut method again just quickly recap you can't you will have four options it is very hard to find the exact recursive formula just with the question so use the four options substitute the first term in the option over here where a n or a n minus one is there and then find the next term substitute the first term find the next term if you get this next term try again for two to three terms only one correct answer will give you all the exact terms whereas all the other uh, uh, wrong answers may give you one term correct but others will be wrong that's it so see you in the next topic with the next video we now move on to the 20th topic which is the last topic in the part two this is the last topic where you will have mcqs so next part will be the writing part only three questions now we will look into the part two last question that's 20th one using binomial theorem now i hope you remember the theorem binomial theorem there are two formulas we will just look into this one because this down one is just the expansion of nc0 ncr so instead of ncr expansion we can directly use the calculator or oh, the formula is very simple n factorial divided by the r factorial into n minus r factor whole factorial but if you are getting confused you can just do it in calculator but the thing is you need to know this formula how do you know how do you remember this so you need to remember it starts with nc0 now you need to write this n c and 0 you need to memorize this and then a will start with the first n value and b will be the zeroth value so this is it if you remember the first term then the next corresponding terms are very easy 
because you should just keep on uh, n does not change only the zero keeps on changing and this n minus n power n reduces by one now it'll be again n c instead of zero you will have one a n minus one b one yes that's it and then it keeps on going like the same but you must remember when to stop when this number that c one two three matches the n value imagine you had four then when you get c4 you have to stop because over here it will be 4 minus 4 it's 0 and b will be 4 or a power 0 whenever this you reach this you will have to stop we will see a problem you'll understand how easy and uh, easy it is to solve you will have say like this the two terms are given a binomial th uh, this is binomial terms because you will have to expand by binomial theorem which is for binomials basically but now if you're doing this by multiplication you have to multiply seven times and it's going to take an enormous amount of time so what you do now is basically use the formula so write the formula first understand it you don't need to write everything you can directly write the substitution over here how do you do is see n is how much is the power n is seven it starts with seven now that does not change it's seven till the end now you start with zero seven c zero which is the first term it is x x to the power 7 that is a the next term will be power 0 that is 1 so you don't need to write it okay because power 0 is nothing it'll be it'll become 1 sorry and then 7c1 x will reduce by 1 so x power 6 2z to the power 1 same way 7c2 minus 2 uh, from 7 will be 5 and then 2z2 so you can always just check the minus sign over here 7 minus 3 is how much 4 so x must be 4 and what is the second value 3 this must match 7 and four, uh, minus 4 is 3 this much match with the b value same way 7 minus 5 is 2 and this must match 7 minus 6 is 1 this must match and whenever it's 7 and 7 0 so you don't write it this is it now you can expand it further how do you expand this c this that c values you can just use calculator you should use shift and then you can use this division symbol you will get the c value but remember beside this whatever is left side must be written before it seven and whatever is in the right side is written next the answer is one same way you can just keep changing the values and get the answer now let me check for phi it's 25 so 7c over here you got 25 then 7 say 6 it'll be 1 oh, sorry 7 and then 7 say 6 over here is 7 and then uh, 7 c 7 okay let's do 7 c 7 it'll be 1 yeah sorry it'll uh yeah 7 c 7 will be 7 sorry okay it's 1 I, i'm also getting confused i'm so sorry 7 c 7 over here is 1 whenever you have 7 c1 it starts with 7 like that okay anyways it's it's very easy if you uh if you start to understand it it's very easy there's a pattern you can easily remember i'm just getting confused now but anyways so that's how we get it over here you start with 7 c0 it'll be 1 and you end with 7 c7 it'll be 1 now what about these other numbers they are these numbers see over here the coefficient is there right those see 2z uh, 2 squared is 4 over here 2 cube is 8 and 2 to the power 4 is 16 and so on okay 2 to the power 7 is 128 why we don't write anything over here because it's 1 so that's the thing and then this power over here with z all you need to do is multiply these terms now 35 times 8 35 times 16 all this just in calculator and you will get but now see over here they have just asked for the third term sorry i forgot to do that it's only for third term so why do you want to multiply all the terms and find so just stop over here once you apply the formula it's enough once you need to know the formula and substitution then it's enough all you need to do is look for the third term you can stop at this method only this step itself but this is just for understanding and count the third term that is one two three this is the third term right just write the third term and solve it it'll be four times 
uh, 21 is 80, 81, 84, sorry, x to the power 5 and z square. And that's it. So that is how we solve for the third term or any given term. Now you can see over here they have just told you to expand. That means you ought to just do the entire uh, expansion. Same thing, use the formula over here. It ends at 4c4. See, this is the answer. Uh, sorry, this is the stopping point. It starts with 4c0. And now all the terms, this is a term. Use bracket when there is more than one term, always. And even if there is negative, use bracket. Now this minus over here, see in the previous one it was plus. So we didn't bother about the sign. Here it's minus. You must write it along with the next term b. So this term b will be minus 60. Same way include the minus sign everywhere over here. And then you need to just simplify this in calculator. Then you can multiply them. And just simplification and you will get the answer. Now they have just told you to expand over over here just expansion so we have just left it as it is but if they are told any particular term just choose that term and then solve it so once you substitute you can stop and if they have told third term just choose the third term or fifth term just choose the fifth term sorry that's the one so that's how we do it here same way please do try it by yourself so one or two is done this one was done, I guess, but others you need to do it by yourself. If they have told seventh term, after substitution, count carefully. How do you count this? Say now we after substitution one, two, three, four, five. The plus sign demarks the different terms. Okay, this is entirely single term, whichever. Okay, so that's how you count it and you just solve it. Here are the answers. Please do it by yourself and then check for the answers. So this is the end of the part two. Now, in the next part, it'll be writing part, which will, uh, there are only three questions, but you need to write the steps. You can't do the calculator method or shortcut methods. So please stay tuned for the next videos. I will try to do them as soon as possible. And one more thing is, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe. That would mean a lot to me. And if you have any other doubts or anything, you can put them in the comment section. I'm trying to get these videos as soon as possible. So please, a little bit of patience, but I'll try to do it uh, at my best pace. Thank you, guys. We now move on to the final part. That is the part three, which is writing. It's only three questions, 21, 22, and 23, but the weightage is very high. The weightage is 20 marks. So it is many marks for each questions. So... We will do each of these videos now and make sure you're writing and practicing not only the part three, all the parts so that you remember and in the exam you don't go blank. So please write and practice uh, thoroughly. And before we begin with the 21st topic, quickly want to remind you, if you're not yet subscribed to my channel, please do hit that subscribe button. It is free to subscribe, but it would mean a lot to me. And all those who have already subscribed and those who like my videos and share it, I greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much. Now we will go to the 21st topic. It is the product and quotient uh, of a complex number in polar form. So now, before we go ahead, you need to remember these, problem, uh, these formulas. Now, the given complex number will be in z1 equals r1 of cos theta 1 plus i sine theta 1 and z2 the same thing only the sub subscript is 2. Here the product formula for these two is given as before before I continue you must remember the complex numbers will be given in polar form it needs to be in polar form only then you can apply these formulas okay so the those uh whatever is the question if it is not in polar form convert to polar form and then solve it by using this formulas because the formula is in polar form so product is multiplying z1 and z2 it's very simple the radi radiuses are multiplied plural of radius is radii so radii are multiplied r1 into r2 and the theta angle is added up so cos with this cos is added up and since sine is imaginary you must write i sine at these two angles it is as simple as it gets very easy to remember what about the quotient 
it's division so r1 and r2 are divided only difference is the angle is subtracted so theta 1 minus theta 2 here also the same thing that's the only thing now then we will solve the problem find 2 of cos 5 pi by 3 plus i sine 5 pi by 3 multiplied by 4 cos pi by 6 plus i that is the imaginary part that is sine pi by 6 in polar form then it express the product in rectangular form so once you solve the product you need to convert it back to rectangular form let's see how it is done first of all write the formula this is very important now it makes it's so simple isn't it this is r1 r2 you can write as just substitution r1 r2 theta1 and theta2 is over here these angles will be same for one of this theta1 and theta1 itself so cos 5 pi by 3 plus pi by 6 plus i sine pi by 3 plus pi by 6 5 pi by 3 sorry now please don't directly do it and calculate it do these steps write the formula this is writing part you must write this let's simplify 4 times 2 is 8 5 pi by 3 plus pi by 6 is 11 pi by 6 you can do by the uh, lcm over here or you can just use the calculator for that over here you can just write the uh, fractions you will get the answer 1 by 6 it's 11 by 6 you can add just pi or you can add it over here itself 5 pi and you can write 1 pi or you can remove that one it's the same thing 11 pi by 6 same thing over here because the values are same theta 1 and theta 2 do only once now this is the answer but what is the remaining rectangular form so what do you do is multiply this so now multiply this solve it what do we do is multiply 8 over here and write it as it is okay we are the first thing is this is solved anyways what is done is very simple cos 11 pi sorry 11 pi by 6 now will i get the correct answer no why is this my calculator is in degree mode therefore i'm getting wrong answer i should get root 3 by 2 now let me change it shift mode and 4 now it's in radian now look the answer is correct same thing with sine only thing is change over here to sine and you will get the answer negative half i will remain as it is and now we can multiply 8 inside so multiply this by 8 this term will be negative 4 and over here it will be 4 root 3 why because 2 and 4 cancels off so that's the thing so this is the simplified answer in rectangular form 4 root 3 minus 4 i that's how we solve it so the polar form of the product is given over here this was the step and the rectangular form is given over here that's the answers let's see a uh, division problem the quotient problem it's a real world problem if a circuit has a voltage of e equals 150 volt and imp impedance that's resistance of 6 minus 3 j joules ohms uh, 6 minus 3 j ohm is the unit of resistance or impedance find the current in ampere in the circuit in rectangular form you know electric current is given by the resistance time is the uh, resistance times the current sorry so sorry this is the voltage now what happens is basically current is flowing right so whenever current flows through wire what happens there'll be a resistance because it directly can't freely flow there will be a resistance or hindrance which is called impedance so when you multiply the current with the impedance you will get the voltage so sometimes the units will be used differently because i remember e is equal to I, v is equal to i r so voltage is equal to current into resistance this is also correct or i equals v by r this is what we will solve because they want i current current is required so what you need to do is the voltage in this case will be e divided by z so voltage divided by the resistance so now let's write the given first voltage is given as 150 volts is there any imaginary part like this no so it's zero what about this uh, resistance is given as 6 minus 3j resistance or impedance 
okay the formula to find i is e divided by z okay what what do we do can we use this directly no we need to convert this into polar form so express e and z in polar form how do we do the polar form you must recall what we have learned earlier it's first radius radius is just square root of a square plus b square now what is the a square and b square value a square a and b a and b so square root of a square plus b square b square is zero so it's going to be the same thing square root of square this cancels your remaining with 150 what about the next one six oh okay before that find the argument or the angle theta is given by tan inverse b divided by a so tan inverse of zero is zero you can directly do it in the calculators tan inverse of zero is zero don't need to divide because zero divided by anything is zero and then what do we have over here the polar form that is 150 radius multiplied by cos zero plus j sine zero the imaginary part is zero so now sine zero is zero so this cancels off cos zero is one so answer is 150 itself now for z that is impedance or resistance i've written uh, uh sorry z impedance this is the radius r so maybe that's the reason why r is not mentioned because you're finding radius as well it might be confusing so now square root six square plus of negative three the whole square put it in the calculator directly just use the symbol six square there is no negative so directly without bracket but when there is minus sign put the bracket the answer is three root five tan inverse negative three by six directly do it you will get the answers now no need of converting to co-terminal anything because you're directly using it's fine just use it as it is now once you have got the angles uh, sorry once you've got the equations in polar form then you have to use the formula what is the formula to find i e divided by z we know e is 150 cos 0 plus j sine 0 divided by the other one 3 root 5 cos negative 0 0.46 plus j sine negative 0 0.46 now why j j it's fine it's imaginary part itself sometimes it's written as j or sometimes most of the time it's written as i that's it's fine it's the same thing now write the formula z1 by z2 is divide the radiuses and subtract the angles so this is what it looks like 150 and divided by 3 root 5 and then 0 minus of minus 0 0.46 this becomes plus so this is the polar form but what about the rectangular form just multiply you take your calculator over here so cos of 0 0.46 will give you 0. 896 so it's written as 0 0.9 and same thing with sine what happens is it'll give you 0 0.44 and then multiply this by 10 root 5 and also you need to multiply 10 root 5 by 0 .9. this is 9.9 um okay the the reason is i took the answer over here if you take 0 0.44 i think so it'll be this wait let me check yes see the thing is they have just taken um it's me only i only did this i have taken 0 0.44 into 10 root 5 that's the reason and over here you can see this is multiplied with 0 0.9 so 10 times 0 0.9 is 9 root 5 so this is the rectangular form the current is about 9 root 5 minus 9.84 joule amperes uh, j sorry it's not joule j amperes so this is how we solve this problem division now it's up to you please make sure you solve them by yourself it is very very simple remember the two formula product formula and division that's quotient formula and directly solve it there's nothing uh, complicated in this always remember these two angles are same and these two angles are same first one is theta one this is theta two r1 r2 solve the answers solve it by yourself and then check for the answers the answers are given over here please do try them by yourselves don't blindly look at the answers solve write and solve and then verify your answers that's it for the topic number 21
Okay, wait. Oh, there are some more problems. Please do try them all. You can see over here the polar form and the rectangular form is mentioned. Both the forms are mentioned. So do the polar form, then solve the rectangular form as well. So this is how we do it. So in the next uh, video, we will continue with the topic number 22. We moved the penultimate topic, that is the topic number 22. In this, we have some real world problem. Let me just read it out. It's about interest and stuff. We have to write a recursive formula. Nasser had 15,000 dirhams in credit debt when he graduated from the college. The balance increased by 2% each month due to interest. Murabaha. Interest is the amount of uh, payment the bank or, you know, some entity holds on you. Basically, it's like paying them back. Now, if you borrow, say, 100,000 dirhams as a loan, when you're giving back to the bank, you just don't pay 100,000. You have to pay a little more based on the interest. So that is the interest. And NASA could only make 400 dirhams payment per month. Write a recursive formula for the balance of his account each month. Then determine the balance after five months. Okay, let's see. So this can be read, but this is very important. First, let's understand the initial amount. What is the initial amount? Let's take it as A1. So A N can be any balance of the nth month. Initial will be A1. So this is the first one. After the first month, what is going to happen? So this is the initial. So this is basically A1, but it's not the month one. It is where it started. Plus 2% of A1. That is 2% of A1 minus monthly payment 400 this is very important because the interest adds on to the balance whereas the payments made is subtracted so what is two percent of a1 it is about uh, uh it is about one second let me just do it two percent would be i think so 150 into two sorry 300 yeah around 300 yes it's 300 exactly so 15,000 uh two percent will be 300 so he is not only paying 15,000 he has to pay 15,300 but 400 is subtracted so this would be the equation but we need to write it properly what does it mean a1 is the first initial amount 2% means it's 0 0.02. You can just check it over here uh, if you're getting confused with it. 2% would be 0 0.02. So 1 A1 plus 0 0.02 A2. Or you can just 1 plus. Because the terms are same, right? The like terms can be added. So it will be 1.02 A1 minus 400. Look over here. What's going to happen? It's going to be 1.02 a1 minus 400 that would be after first month a2 means after first month okay don't think this is the uh, second month no it is not the second month it's after first month because this is the initial values now if you write a recursive formula imagine this is the nth month a n what would happen is this would be n minus 1 that's it okay you need to know one before now then, this is the recursive formula. A n equals 1.02. A n minus 1 mi uh, minus 400. So let's find the next five terms because after five months, right? So after the first month, because this is the initial amount, the first month, this would be the result. 14,900. Why? Because it's 15,000. You can just do this over here directly. 15,000 multiplied by 1.02. It's 1.02 minus 400. So that is the first month. Now this changes 15,000 changes to 14,900. I'll just put the answer. So after two months, it'll be 14,798. After three months, this would be the answer. After four months and after five months, this would be the answer. Look, after one, after two, let's say after three months, four months. And the fifth month, after fifth month, three, four, and five. So if you write A as zero, then you would get it like A one, two, three. But since we start with the A one, 
it's like that so understand this is after first month second month third month fourth month and after fifth month you will have to still pay for 14,479.6 dirhams so it is not a great uh, way to just pay back 400 it won't make much difference because there's a huge amount if you had paid more then this would significantly reduce say for example if you had paid um, 4,000 something it would significantly reduce the interest because otherwise the balance if you're paying just so much the interest is too much so it won't make much difference so to avoid the interest you need to pay up soon and quickly that is how it is so after fifth month the balance would be so much the recursive formula is over here and the nth value after five months is given over here so this is how we basically solve it now even over here you can easily try this by yourself and solve it it's just a little bit different but you can try this so the answers are over here and uh, so now there's one thing it's not in dollars it's a it's in dirhams ad so just make sure the answer the question is the same thing it's in dirhams i'm sorry for that so answers are the same please do try it by yourself you can see the a1 first term is over here recursive formula and finding the next five terms and whichever sixth month same way over here please do try it by yourself this is just like what we just now solved just that you have to find it until eight years now again over here this is eight uh, this is in dirhams not in dollars but the answers are the same thing please solve it by yourself and then check the answers so that's it so that is the end of the 22nd topic the next topic would be the last topic in the last final video now we move to the final topic final topic of the part three and of the end of term three exam that is the binomial theorem and we have already done this before so i will put that link in the description please go through that and then uh, be thorough with it because that's the same thing what we are going to do now now we have seen this formula already it's a binomial theorem you can find the power of any two sum of any two terms uh, binomial any binomial of any degree using this formula because it's it's okay to remember the formula of a plus b the whole square even for a plus b the whole cube but what if the number is seven over here n is seven it's it's insane i mean it's not impossible but it's very very long but this formula easily gives you the answer so all you need to do is substitute the n value over here and then the formula is very simple it starts with always n the num the degree okay c0 is constant it'll keep on changing 0 to 1 2 3 whereas whatever you start with the degree will be the first term and the second term is 1 because it's uh, b to the power 0 so it's not there then you all you need to do is keep on increasing see this nc does not change look carefully over here see nc does not change only this changes a n degree reduces by one b increases by one and that's how it goes on and whenever imagine you are phi over here as n when you reach phi c phi you stop because a will become phi minus phi that is zero and b will become the maximum power phi that's the degree so there you stop now we will see a problem so let's use this one it's very simple this is the given question power seven now which is the first term this is your first term x 2z is your second term remember the formula substitute it all you need to do is substitute seven c zero a is x to the power seven b is zero that is one what about the next term instead of n put seven seven c one a is x six seven minus one is six so you directly write six no need of um see it's up to you you can do the substitution you know it's just extra step and provided it's writing so it's better you write the step i mean exact substitution i mean or you can do it in your mind it's fine and then what you do is seven c two over here five seven minus two is five two z all power two same thing it continues until where until the seven and seven n and n reaches that is seven c seven b to the power seven minus seven is zero see this x sorry a to the power that x will be one and then you're remaining with two z 
Now you can solve this. See, 7C0 is 1, 7C7 is 7. Over here, it'll be 7 into uh, 6. So it, you know, the formula is very simple. It is basically, uh, okay, it's over here, 7C. This is the expansion of the formula. N factorial divided by N minus R factorial into R factorial. What does that mean is, sorry. Now, let me take this one, for example. N is always the term which is behind C and R is in front of C. So N factorial divided by N minus R multiplied by R factorials. Okay. Now, N factorial is 7. 7 factorial means you have to multiply 7 into 6 into 5 into it keeps on going. I'll write dot 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 till 1. What is N minus R? 7 minus 3. What is the answer? 7 minus 3 is 4 factorial. So it will be basically over here 5 into 4 factorial. So this is 7 minus uh, 3 is again 4 factorial multiplied by R factorial that is 3. 3 factorial will be 3 into 2 into 1. So now this 4 and this cancels off, right? Now what else is remaining? This is remaining 1 time. Six, 3 times 2 is 6 basically. You cancel both this and this is gone. You're remaining with 7 and 5. The answer will be 35 over here. So you can see this term, z x to the power 4 will have 35. This is the substitution of the formula. N factorial by N minus R factorial. But you can directly get it in the um, calculator as well as shown before. So that's the thing. And then what do you do? You directly simplify, like multiply all these numbers. That's it. That's the answer. It is a very simple problem, provided you remember the formula. If you remember this, that's it. Very, very simple. Now here they have asked you a specific term. That's the third term. Count the third term. One, two, three. This, okay. Sorry, I have not mentioned that. This is your answer. That is the third term. This is the complete expansion and this is your third term. Now, if they completely ask you only to expand, it's the same thing. Write the formula. The first term, use brackets. Don't forget it because there are two, two and C. Constant is also there along with the variable. And it's only to the power 4. So, it will end at 4C4. And remember, the negative sign is there. Make sure the second term, the B term, over your B term will have the negative sign as well. Use the brackets because when you square negative it, negative, it becomes positive. Whereas if you cube it, the negative sign remains. So make sure you write it properly and then simplify it and you will get the answer. It is very, very straightforward, not at all difficult. Just please remember that. Now this is for you. Please do try them by yourselves and then check with the answers. So all the answers are mentioned over here. Please do them by yourself. They're pretty simple. Only when minus is there, remember, it'll be minus. And it'll be alternating, see? Plus, minus, plus, minus. Because the odd powers only will have the negative sign. Whereas even powers will dissolve the negative sign. Same way, please do try these by yourselves and then check for the answers. So that's basically it. That's it. So that is the end of the explanations of all the topics i hope this is beneficial for you all the best dear students please do well and if you're not yet subscribed to my channel please do subscribe to it because it's free to subscribe but it would mean a lot to me and it gives me motivation to do more and more so i kindly ask you to do that and also do share it among your friends who will find it helpful I just want to wish you all the best and I hope everyone does great in the exams and get very nice marks. Take care and uh, until the next video, bye-bye for now.